I've mentioned recently in a couple of videos that I am back to being completely on the iPad 100% no more Mac. I wanted to walk through what made this possible for me to go iPad only in the first place, why I had to use the Mac, and well, now why I'm back to being only on the iPad. This video is sponsored by Surfshark, let's get into it. Let's start by talking about why I was just working from the iPad. For those that don't know, I started working from the iPad uh, when the iPad Air 2 and iOS 9 came out. iOS 9 was the first version of iOS to bring multitasking to the iPad. This was before it was labeled iPad OS. In 2017, I found an app called LumaFusion. This was the first multi-track video editor on the iPad. I believe this came out in late 2016, but I didn't find out about it until early, early 2017. And I was using an iPad Pro at the time. I started editing all of my videos on the channel on the iPad. And this was very early on in my channel's life because it started in November of 2016. And I believe I started editing everything on the iPad in February of 2017. So I worked completely from the iPad for years. What I liked about the iPad was how focused it was. I talk a lot about how I have ADHD and I can get distracted incredibly easily. With the iPad though, you just had one or two apps open at the time and it was a very focused device. You were, you were just handling the task at hand and I really liked that. It also felt kind of like a new frontier for computing. There were a lot of new apps popping up all the time. We had the Workflow app, which would later become the Shortcuts app. And there was just a ton of experimenting to be done. And it was so much fun. I love that kind of thing. I also love the transformer nature of the device. It could be a tablet, but then you could attach a keyboard or pair a Bluetooth keyboard with it. And then you could use something like the Apple Pencil at the time. It just, it felt very interesting. I love this time of just using the iPad, experimenting and teaching on the channel. In 2021, the app that gave me the ability to work solely from the iPad got some bugs. The worst of all of these bugs was I wasn't able to export video. Uh, this ended up delaying one of the most important videos for any tech channel, my iPhone review. In fact, it ended up delaying my iPhone 12 Pro review so much that it came out like a couple of days before the M1 Pro and M1 Max review embargo dropped. So nobody cared. Nobody watched it. So to me, that wasn't sustainable. I was on my way to being fully self-employed. I knew it was right around the corner at the time. I just, it wasn't, wasn't going to be sustainable for me. So I ordered an M1 Max MacBook Pro. All the bells and whistles fully spec'd out, except for storage. I went four terabytes instead of eight. And I started editing everything from that. I loved Final Cut. Final Cut is great. It gave me the performance I want. I had reliability. I never had any performance issues with it. It was solid. Now, if we fast forward to WWDC 2022, I was sitting in the audience. First time I was ever invited to an Apple event, grinning ear to ear, super excited. In that uh, keynote, we got the M2 announcement, which focused really heavily on video engines. And keep in mind, we already had the M1 iPad Pro out at this time. Uh, in iPad OS 16, we got external monitor support, virtual memory swap, stage manager. I think there might've been something else too, but it all kind of clued me into the fact that, yeah, Final Cut is coming to the iPad. Like it, it's coming. Like I, in fact, you can go back to my video that I filmed right after the, uh, the keynote that year. And my conclusion at the end was all of this stuff is leading to Final Cut coming to the iPad in the next year. But it, it didn't ship at WWDC. It didn't ship in 2022. At the end of 2022, I was just not happy with my computing life. I was having to use the Mac for creative projects like video editing. And I had built my channel and my career around using the iPad. It's what my audience, what you all want to see from me. I can tell by the numbers, like my iPad videos do so much better than all of my other videos. So it's what the audience wanted. And also I just, wasn't interested in making Mac videos. I tried a few Mac videos because I was really encouraged to diversify and I thought, you know, diversifying the stuff I talked about would be smart, but the Mac videos always felt a little forced. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN service that protects you and your data. So I've told this story before, but I think it's really important. I worked in the IT field for almost nine years. One day I was at this job and we set up a fake coffee shop, open Wi-Fi network, a bunch of different computers, open browsers, things like that. 
and we wanted to see if we could snoop on their traffic. And it was scary how much data we were able to get. Now, if those computers were running Surfshark, their data would be completely encrypted from the device to its destination, protecting your privacy. Now, this isn't about, uh, well, I have nothing to hide, so I have nothing to worry about kind of thing. Data is the new gold, and people are gonna do tricky stuff to get a hold of it. One thing I really appreciate about Surfshark is they don't keep logs. VPN services that keep logs, they're defeating the purpose. They don't use those. They, 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 they literally are doing nothing for you. Now with Surfshark, you're able to change your location of where the internet thinks your computer is. So we all know streaming services have different content in different countries. So you, if you're in America, you could check out what Canadian Netflix has or UK Netflix has, or you can check out an F1 race on a different service. There's so many different things you can do with this while you're at home or if you're traveling. I really like Surfshark. In fact, I paid for it myself a couple of years ago. Get an exclusive Surfshark deal. Enter the promo code LOLLY to get up to additional six months for free at surfshark.deals forward slash LOLLY. My thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. So at the start of this year, I took a look at what it would take for me to go back to being on the iPad full time. And it boiled down to two core things. Stage manager needed to be fixed because I was not happy with the state of stage manager at all. And I know you guys were tired of me complaining about it because I heard you guys were tired of me complaining about it. And I needed Final Cut to come to the iPad. In between um, the beginning of 2023 and, and you know when iPad OS 16 shipped, we got the M2 iPad Pros. There wasn't a ton of interesting things about them, but one of the announcements that was that came alongside those was the fact that DaVinci Resolve was coming to the iPad. Now, DaVinci Resolve is the video editor a lot of a lot of people really like right now. It's 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 free for the most part, but there is a pro version you can pay. I think it's like a hundred bucks for, and that's it. It's, it's a really powerful video editor, but it's complicated and it's very different than other non-linear editors. And I tried it. I tried desperately to make it work on the iPad for me because I wanted to get back on the iPad, but I just could not wrap my brain around it. it it's very, very different. I, I learned long, long time ago, uh, Premiere Pro, Final Cut 7, that's kind of what I cut my teeth on when it came to video editing. So it was very different and I just struggled wrapping my brain around it. May of this year, 2023, I got invited down to LA for an announcement. I wasn't told what it was, didn't know until that morning that on May 9th, 2023, Final Cut Pro for the iPad was coming. and. I was in a hotel room when I saw the press release and I literally screamed at six in the morning in a hotel room. There's no way I didn't wake up the people around me. I was ecstatic. I was there for the announcement. I got some hands-on time with it. I, ma I made a couple of shorts about it. You might've seen it or not. Really cool. As soon as I got back from LA, I immediately sold my personal M1 two terabyte iPad Pro and upgraded to a two terabyte M2 iPad Pro. I wanted that extra power. I knew come hell or high water, Final Cut Pro for the iPad, it was gonna work for me. So I wanted that extra power. Uh, usually I have kind of somewhere between like 700 and a terabyte of base storage. I could probably pare that down, but I'm a digital junkie. I don't delete things. I could probably move a bunch of stuff off to my NAS, but I usually need about at least one terabyte for multiple projects. Plus the one and two terabyte models of the iPad Pro give you 16 gigs of RAM versus eight gigs of RAM on the smaller storage sizes. So I immediately started editing video projects on my iPad. I still had a Mac around for bigger projects, but I slowly started doing more and more video edits on my iPad. And in June of 2023, I was at WWDC again. We got iPad OS 17 and they brought all of the major tweaks that I needed for Stage Manager to be good. The window management system wasn't being super aggressive. You can shift click to open an app in the same stage, better resizing options, a lot more. I've gone over it. I'm not gonna rehash it all. This was my everything is coming up millhouse moment. Now, during the summer, I run the betas on my iPad, my iPhone, and my Apple Watch. So I try not to use those devices as production machines, especially my iPad, because I've just had some issues in the past with, with using betas and, my, uh, and the production side. So all of my really big video projects, I was still doing on the Mac Studio review unit I had, but some small stuff I was doing on the iPad. So I was kind of mixing and matching there. Uh, but after all my OS walkthroughs were done, after all my hardware review videos were done, it was time to get back on the stable build of iPad OS. And I removed the Mac Studio from my desk and I went all back in on the iPad and Final Cut for the iPad. 
it's my main computer. There is no Mac anymore. The Mac Studio used to be right here. It's not there anymore. In fact, it's the Lego Back to the Future DeLorean. Right around the time of like the heat of the review season, I was asked to actually speak at the Final Cut Creative Summit that Apple puts on. This was a really big deal for me. I've never been asked to publicly speak at a conference before, so I was very excited to do this. And they asked me to talk about, well, Final Cut for the iPad. Make a long story short, I ended up giving the f first real keynote talk. I was the second talk. I was, I was right after I Justine. Uh, she did a really great, like, kind of like, not really a Q and a, but like, kind of like talking about her experience and stuff like that. It was really good. And then I was right after her and I got to give like, here's my keynote slides and demo and all that stuff. And it was just such a huge honor to be able to talk about something that I have wanted for so long and that I live in every day. So now it's been about almost two months. I, I don't remember the exact date now. I should have marked it down, but ever since I, I touched the Mac last, and by that, I mean the last time I exported a video from the Mac. I'm really happy with my computing life now. Stage Manager works great. Final Cut for the iPad works great. That being said, both those can use more features. I don't think they're feature complete at all, but I can use them to get my work done, and I'm back on the iPad full time. What does the future look like? Well, the iPad is my main computer. This is where I'm doing all of my work, including writing scripts, editing photos and videos, reading, research, programming, building shortcuts, more. And it's the main focus of my channel. That being said, I'm still gonna continue to cover the iPhone and Apple Watch and other like interesting tech that I find because I kind of feel like that whole world revolves around each other and it, they complement each other very well. But there is an elephant size headset in the room of Vision Pro. I am ridiculously excited for Vision Pro. I, I cannot wait to get my hands on it. It's gonna be running iPad apps, so I kind of think it falls into that realm of complementing the iPad as well. But I'm just loving the idea of working in a mixed reality where you're able to pin windows over here. So like I could have my notes while I'm talking. I wouldn't wear it while I'm filming, filming videos, but like theoretically I could have my notes over here, you know, camera over here, like that would be really cool. So it's 100% something I'm gonna be covering. And the way I've thought about how I'm gonna be covering Vision Pro is how I cover the iPad, especially like the early days of working from the iPad. It's an experiment. There's gonna be a lot of trial and error. There's gonna be a lot of discovery of apps and like different things you can do with it, tips and tricks, all sorts of different automations and whatever else I can, you know, f you know, whatever I can do with it, I'm gonna make videos about it. So the iPad's not going anywhere, but I'm definitely gonna be adding Vision Pro to the mix. So we're, we're nearing the end of 2023 and I am so much happier with my computing life going into a new year. I'm so excited for what is on the horizon with what Apple is gonna be releasing next year with Vision Pro and whatever else they have up their sleeves. But I wanna hear from you all. How are you using the iPad in your life? Is it your main computer? Is it a secondary device? Or are you just not using it at all? Let me know. My thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already and have a great day.